In this video, we're going to add movement to our player for our platformer game with Pygame and Python. Hey guys, John Alder here from CodingMe.com, and in this video, we want to start to learn about 2D vector movement. So in past videos, we've had movement by just pressing the arrow keys and having our player just sort of move, right? And as soon as you let your finger off the arrow key, the player just stops. Well, in the real world and even video games, that's not really natural movement. If you think about movement, you have sort of a speeding up and a slowing down. You may want to run faster or slower. When you stop, you kind of want to skid to a stop a little bit. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So we're going to accomplish this using 2D vectors, which allow for position, velocity, and acceleration using several different kinematic physics equations. Now, don't worry, Pygame is going to take care of all of this for us. We don't need to know the equations or even understand them in any way. Uh, but we need to know how to use them, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pygame series, so check that out if you haven't so far. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codeby.com, where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships on my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I've got the code from our last video, aspen underscore platform 2.py, and I've just renamed it aspen underscore platform 3.py. And the first thing we want to do is define our vector. So let's define a 2D vector. And we don't have to do this, but this makes it a little bit easier just to deal with vectors in the future. So we're going to go vector equals, and this is just going to be a pygame.math.vector2, so a 2D vector. And we could just reference this every time we want to create a vector, but it's easier just to write vector. So we've just defined it like this and assigned it into this variable. So, all right, that looks good. So now let's come down to our Aspen class here. In order to use a 2D vector, we're going to be using physics with position, velocity, and acceleration. And velocity is sort of change over time, and acceleration is sort of change in velocity over time, I guess. So acceleration is speeding up and slowing down. Velocity is just like movement, right? So we've had velocity in the past, so it was just sort of constant. But we want to now, like I said, deal with physics so that a thing can speed up quickly or slow down slowly or skid to a stop sort of subtly. If you hold your finger on the button, we want it to go faster over time. These are all physics things. And the branch of physics that deals with this are called kinematic equations. You can Google kinematic equations if you want to sort of look at them. If you're into math and physics, we don't need to understand them at all in order to use them. Uh, we just need to set them up. So let's go kinematic, kinematic uh, vectors. And vectors are x, y. This is a two-dimensional vector, so x and y, right? So let's go self dot, like I said, we want position. And this is going to equal our vector that we created up here, right? This vector guy. So this is going to be a vector. And we always want to pass in two things, an x and a y. Well, these are going to be positions, right? This is a position. And remember, Aspen has an X and a Y passed in when it's created, when she's created, when the player is created. We're passing in those X, Y coordinates, which if you remember are our tile map stuff, the J times 32 and I times 32. Those get passed right here when we instantiate our Aspen class and then add the group. Those get passed in. So those are being passed in right here is X and Y. So we can use them right like that. So that's position. We also need velocity. So self dot velocity. And this is going to equal a vector of, and to begin with, we want it to be zero, zero. We don't want to move until we hit the keyboard key, right? We're going to use the arrow keys. So until you hit the arrow key, we don't want to be moving. So that's a velocity of zero, zero. And X and Y are, think of them as X and Y coordinates. X is left and right. Y is up and down. So uh, we're going to be dealing a lot with X in this video. We're just going to be moving with back and forth until we go, you know, until we deal with gravity in the next video or two, we just want to move back and forth. So that's going to be X, right? Anyway, then we also want self dot acceleration. And same thing, this is going to be a vector of zero and zero. And maybe we'll just comment, uh, don't move, start, zero, zero. And here, no speeding up or slowing down to start, right? We're just at zero, zero. We're not moving at all when we just initially start the game or define these things. So, okay, that looks good. We also need some kinematic constants. And these are 
sort of how fast we want our player to go, how fast we want the player to speed up, and also how much friction is involved. So you understand friction in the real world, that's sort of uh, the force pressing against a thing. So, you know, if you go like this with your hand, the air sort of, you feel the air pressing against your hand, That's think of that as friction. The faster you do it, the harder the air presses. If I go like this very slowly, I don't feel any air on my hand at all, right? There's no friction going on. Well, very little friction going on. If I go like that real fast, I feel the air, you know, there's friction. So we need to define both the speed of our acceleration and our friction. So these are going to be constants. Like I said, they're not going to ever change. So let's go self dot uh, horizontal acceleration. Spell that right. Seems right. And let's set that at two or you can set it at one or three or however fast you want. And you could play around with this number. And this is just going to be how quick player speeds up. And we also want, like I said, friction. So that's going to be self dot, let's call this horizontal underscore friction. And I'm dealing with horizontal here because that's left and right. We'll deal with up and down later on. We just want to get the movement left and right in this video. So you can set this to anything you want. I'll, let's start it out at 0.2, and this is just going to be friction. And again, you can play around with this number. We will in a second to see how it changes. Uh, you might want to put it at, you know, 1.5 or 1.0. We'll start it at 2 and see how that looks and move from there. Okay, so we've got our sort of physics stuff mapped out here. Now we need to play with our update function because this is where the magic happens. This is where, you know, things are going to move when we press the keys, in our case, the arrow keys. So let's set up our keys. So this is going to be a pi game dot key dot get underscore pressed. And we've done this many times. Probably want to spell key, right? There we go. Now let's say if keys. And here we want to say pi game dot the key of left. Here we'll just pass. And here let's say if keys pi game dot k underscore right. And again, we'll just pass. And the left and right are the left and right arrows on your keyboard, right? That's the keyboard left and the keyboard right arrow keys. What do we want to happen whenever we press the arrow key? Well, we want to change the acceleration because these are all connected. Acceleration is a function of velocity. Velocity is going to be a function of position. So if we change this, this will sort of definitionally change and this will definitely definitionally change. Like if we're moving at a certain speed, well, the velocity, you have to be moving in order to be speeding up or slowing down, right? And if we're moving velocity, well, that means our position is definitionally changing. So these are all three sort of linked up. So we'll start out by changing the acceleration whenever we press the key, right? So to do that, let's go self dot acceleration. And we want this to be uh, of x. Remember, we've got our acceleration here, and this is a vector. So this is x and this is y. We're changing the x one of these here, right? And we want to do is, well, left is going to be a negative. We want it to go, you know, to the left, right will be a positive. So acceleration dot x, let's have this equal to ourself dot horizontal acceleration, whatever this is, right? Now, we want this to go, like I said, negative. So this is going to be negative one times whatever this is, right? All right, that looks good. Now for the right, we want to do the same thing, but instead of negative one, we'll just have it do itself the actual positive number because that will move it right. So, okay, that looks good. Now if we save this and run it, we're not really going to get anything yet. So I'm in my C slash games directory, my virtual environment is turned on. Let's run Python Aspen underscore platform 3.py. Oh, we've got two Aspens up there. So now I'm pressing the keys and nothing happens. So first, let's, let's get rid of this other Aspen here. Yeah, let's change this four to a zero there. Okay, so we've defined the acceleration, but we haven't linked up any of these things yet. So we have to actually link them all up. So to do that, we're going to calculate new kinematics, right? So let's start with acceleration. Let's go self dot acceleration dot x. And this is going to be minus equals our self dot velocity x times our self dot horizontal friction. So 
Now, if you think about it, acceleration is how fast you're going times whatever friction is pushing against you, right? So as I move my hand fast, there's more friction. As I move slow, there's less, less friction based on the velocity, how fast I'm moving, right? So, all right, that kind of makes sense. We also want to now change the velocity. So let's go self.velocity. And this is going to be plus equals self.acceleration, which has, you know, been updated right here, right? So all of these tie into each other. Now we can add these two together because they're both vectors, right? Remember, this is a vector and this is a vector. And this acceleration, the x value of it has changed here. So we can add these two together. So think about adding vectors, right? If you had a, a one and a two vector, and you wanted to add a, a two and a three vector or a three and a four vector or whatever, this one gets added to this three and this two gets added to this four. The vectors add match up, right? So this would equal, well, one plus three, that would be four and two plus four, this would be six. In our case, these are both, the six is going to be zero because we're not moving up and down. Right? We're not doing anything with this y coordinate yet. We will in the next videos or so. But we are changing this x, right? So we can add these two vectors together, right? So, okay, that looks good. Now, the only thing left is self.position. Like I said, these are all connected. You change one, now you change this one, now you change this one, it changes this one, it changes this one, right? So let's go self.position plus equals self.velocity. The physics equation requires like half of your acceleration it, it, for position. It's just how it works out. I don't understand it. You don't need to understand it. This is just the physics equation requires uh, 0.5. So I would say 0 0.5 times our self dot acceleration, right? That will then move the position. These things look good. These things look good in case we, if we didn't have a typo of some sort, which we probably did. Now, we still need to update our rect, right? We still need to actually move our guy. So that's just going to be self dot rect dot bottom left because let's see, that's where we defined it bottom left for our player. So self dot rect dot bottom left uh, is going to equal our self dot position. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We're still going to need to make a little tweak here, but at least I want to show you where we're at right now. So let's run this guy. And as we push this, it starts to move, but when I let my finger off the button, it starts to jiggle back and forth, right? Well, that's because if we look at this, we've kind of set our acceleration constant. Like it's just, it's, it's two, right? And as soon as we set it to this self dot horizontal acceleration, it gets set to two. Well, when we take our finger off the button, we don't want it to still be at two. And it, it's wobbling back and forth because friction is still pushing on it, right? So it's, it wants to go forward, but friction is pulling it back slowly, slowly until it bounces in the opposite direction. And then it goes backwards until friction starts to pull it back again. And that's why we see it wobbling back and forth. So we just need to, in our update function, set the initial acceleration to uh, zero, zero to start, right? So here we'll just go self dot acceleration equals a vector of zero, zero, which is just what we've defined it as initially, right? But here, when we update, every time we update and press a key, that will change. This update function will get called again uh, because that's how this works uh, down here when we are creating the sprite, and putting it on the screen. And so that should work. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. Now, let's see how that did. Now I'm pressing it. I can go back and forth and you'll notice it kind of slides. I'm taking my finger off and it sort of slides to a stop. It's sort of subtle, right? If I get right to the edge here, well, let me see. It kind of slides over into the water a little bit. Now, obviously we haven't created gravity yet. So our Aspen isn't falling into the water and we're not going, I'm pressing the up key and nothing's happened because we haven't done that yet. But here we're starting to get some nice physics movement here. Now, this sort of rate of sliding to a stop, maybe that's too abrupt for you. We can tinker with that.
and that's going to be our friction, right? So if we change this to say 1.0, that's going to be less friction, right? So, oh, you can see for one, we accelerate faster because there's less friction. But also as I take it off, man, it really scoots across there. I'm, I'm taking it off at the same sort of time I was in the last little clip we did. But now it's Aspen is really kind of sliding out because there's less friction, less opposite force on her. So she slides out farther. So, you know, this is going to be a function of how difficult you want to make your game, right? If you want them to slide around more, well, that might make the game harder, right? So sort of keep that in mind. You can play around with these numbers, uh, have them do whatever you want. Uh, but yeah, that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to change it back to point two just to keep it easier. But yeah, we are moving right along. And now if I just press it and let go, Aspen just sort of moves a little bit and then kind of slides to a stop. If I hold the button, shoom, she kind of speeds up zoom and goes off the screen. Now, obviously we're going to have to keep her from going off the screen. We'll fix all that later, uh, but for now, all right, we are moving right along and that is the beginning of 2D vectors. So not too difficult just to kind of quickly recap. We remember create your vector up here and then create your kinematics. You just have position, velocity, acceleration, basic physics stuff. And we also have a acceleration constant and a friction constant. And we can set this to anything we want to. If we want to change this to five, right? Well, that's a lot, a lot faster. So let's run this guy again. Now I just, just pressing the button very quickly and letting it off. You can see Aspen moves a lot further and slides a lot more. And zoom, it, zoom, you can barely watch her. She's going so fast. So I'm going to change that back to two and all there is to it. So. Again, not that difficult. We've got position, velocity, acceleration. We've got our horizontal acceleration constant. We've got our friction constant. And then we're moving it, you know, in sort of the same way as before. We're grabbing our keys and using the key left and right thing. It's just slightly different. A little bit of math here that's not too bad. And then we just update our things accordingly. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Going over 190,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.